A number of years ago, it would have been the year 2000. And the reason I know it was the year 2000 is it was Olympic year, which qualified this very tournament, the U.S. Open, qualifies you for the final Olympic wrestle-off. And should you win the U.S. Open, not only do you qualify, but should you win it, you sit out of the uh, mini tournament. They have to go through a mini tournament, meaning the top eight guys. Whoever wins that then draws in to you. You get to sit fresh, and then you go two out of three. So whoever it is that wins that is going to be exhausted and tired and beat up on before he gets to you. That is your reward and that is your incentive for showing up and conquering the U.S. Open in an Olympic year. Per the rules as they were back then. Okay, great. Matt Lindlin. The, the, the scales in wrestling, I should add, are extremely regulated and regimented. And I'll tell you what I mean. Weigh-ins start promptly at four o'clock. They put a great big clock in the weigh-in room. It does not matter how many people are there. It does not matter how many officials are ready. Nobody will get on that scale until the second hand exactly hits 12 and that clock exactly moves to four. Now that clock will continue to run and you have exactly 30 minutes to conclude the weigh-ins. So you could miss weight. You could miss weight again. You could miss it again. It's not like MMA where you get two shots over the course of the next two hours to cut the weight. You have 30 minutes. You could try 10 times. You could try 20 times. You could try no more times and give up right then. But at 4.30, okay, just like an Ironman competition, they will pack up the table and the equipment and they will walk out. It is over, period. Does not matter who you are. Matt Lindland happened to be the number one guy in the country. Matt Lindland comes into that weigh-in for his second attempt at 4.29 and 30 seconds. Now, new rule was implemented that year. You must weigh in in a singlet. You don't have to have briefs on underneath. You don't have to have a jock strap. You must have a singlet. You used to be able to weigh in naked. Should it come down to that, you could do that. For whatever reason, they changed that rule. You have to have a singlet on. So Matt, Lim 30 seconds left, okay? He gets on the scale. He misses weight. He gets off the scale. He now has 20 seconds left. Joe Warren happened to be standing right there. Joe Warren was three weight classes less than Matt Lindland, which meant he was a much smaller guy than Matt Lindland, which meant he has a much smaller and lighter singlet than Matt Lindland. And Matt says, give me your singlet. 20 seconds left and ticking. Joe gives him the singlet. Matt gets on the scale. There's eight seconds left and he is broken. He is done and he says it. His coach Anatoly Petrolov is standing right there. I'm standing right there listening. And Matt Lindland says, I'm done. I don't care what happens. I don't care if I need to go up a weight. I am done. One second left. He happened to be on weight. He got off the scale. Went into the tournament, the number one seed. Recovered by the next day. Made the finals. Won that. Sat out the mini tournament. Went on to the Olympic Games and got a silver medal. So it is very interesting, though. And I happened to be there to observe this when he broke. Look, anybody that breaks doesn't make weight. Matt Lindland broke, but he happened to be on weight. And frankly... Look at all the circumstances that happened. Had Joe Warren not been standing there or some other athlete who could act that quickly, rip a singlet off, throw it to Matt because they knew the circumstance, they knew the clock was ticking down. They happened to be three weight classes lower. This is a digital scale. It doesn't just weigh to the 10th. It weighs to the gram. And he was 0. 0.0. 0, 0.0 with one second on the official clock that would have scratched him, went on to be an Olympic silver medalist. Everything Matt did in MMA was based around that Olympic medal. Just getting his opportunity, now I think Matt would have got it another way. I, I will concede to that. But at the time he got it, Jeff Blatnick, who was a fellow Olympian and Olympic medalist, was the commissioner of the UFC and Jeff Blatnick personally saw to it that Matt Lindlin was given the opportunity. And he took that all the way to title fights. He took that all the way to a, a consensus ranking of number one. He's now the highest rated coach in the United States of America. There is no coach with a higher ranking than Matt Lindlin. And it's all because of that Olympic medal. One gram or one second would have changed the entire trajectory of Matt. And quite frankly, most of you are listening and go, wow, what an amazing story. Thank goodness Joe was there. Thank goodness Matt got that singlet on so fast. Thank goodness he happened to make weight in the second hand round. But you know what, guys? You all have stories like that too. 
All of us do. Whether it's the girl you're dating or the person you're married to now, how you met them. You met them at a restaurant, but you weren't even going to go that night. Or you always go to the restaurant that night, but sh- the other person wasn't supposed to be there. Not- Whatever it could be, ha- happenstance and circumstance, missteps, accidents and mistakes and luck. That's what life's all about. You could tell those stories a hundred times about, I wouldn't even be here now if this hadn't happened. And I love the guys that always rework the stories, right? I see guys do this in business all the time. Nobody's more guilty of this than than business. If you ever want to find out how some guy made it, but he went and wrote a book, read his book, enjoy the entertainment, and just know that was a whole bunch of misinformation. Guys do this in business all the time. They make missteps. They make suckers moves. And five other things happened. Five other intangible variables happened and their suckers move, bad idea, works out. I see it all the time. But then they rework the story when they try to tell it. They rework the story chapter after chapter, page after page in their best-selling book that they put out and sell it on Amazon right now about how they knew, they predicted the psychology of the customer. They predicted the atmosphere of the market. No, you didn't. You were no different than anybody else. You threw a whole bunch of stuff at the wall and you saw what stuck. And then when it did stuck, you came back, reworked the story and took the credit for it. 